Hey Capricorn, this is Michael with your June 2022 reading. I hope this finds you well. I apologize that these readings are coming out so late. I've had no shortage of technical difficulties with this past Mercury retrograde. I actually recorded several of the videos after many attempts of trying to get the intro right and tap into the energy and come to find out I didn't have audio in any of the videos. So I've had to re-record a lot of them. Um, so thank you so much for your patience and understanding with me. I do apologize again that they are coming out so, so late. Uh, before we dive into your reading, I already have all of your cards here on the table. I just want to thank all of you who have supported this channel with your likes, shares, comments, and subscribes. And an extra special thank you to all of you who have supported this channel on Patreon. It really is with all of your support that I'm able to continue putting out these messages and doing this work. So as always, thank you so, so much. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, you've all been so kind and wonderful to me, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Anyways, Capricorn, uh, let's break into this reading here. I am really, really curious to see how this kind of plays out. I just sort of glance at the cards, to be honest with you. Uh, the astrology at the start of this month is really, really interesting because we do have Mercury going direct, which I kind of referenced. Mercury has been retrograde throughout most of May. And when we are in this direct station period, we are in what's called the post-shadow period. And until the 18th, Mercury is going to be catching up to the place it was in the sky before it went retrograde, before it started moving backwards. And when we're in this period, there's a lot that's happening in this time where it really feels like we're trying to catch up with things. I've definitely felt it in my own life for sure, especially being a, a Virgo myself, I'm ruled by Mercury. What's interesting about this specific Mercury placement is that Mercury is squaring your ruling planet, Saturn, just as it's about to go retrograde in the sign of Aquarius. Now, ordinarily, when Saturn goes retrograde, it really is a time of letting go of excessive burdens and focusing on things that really matter. There is a need to discipline and focus on things, but ultimately, the distractions around us generally are actually reduced or, or lessened in some way during this transit, and it really does help us have this kind of laser focus on things. However, with Mercury squaring Saturn, what this has really felt like for a lot of people I, I've seen is we're at this kind of breaking point now, after the past month especially, after the eclipses, and it's like, okay, things need to shift. I need to change things in order to prioritize the things that really, really matter. And that's actually a huge theme for the month of June. I talked about that in the astrology blog, which you can find on my website, which is also linked in the description box. Um, I do have the King of Pentacles here for you, though, showing up in the past. And so it feels like you've been working on something. You've been trying to build something here. And from this King of Pentacles, I see the Knight of Pentacles. And it was actually kind of on the table in this way. And it almost felt like the king was sending the knight. But then there's also... Um, I, I kind of saw this energy and it, it kind of made me feel like some of you... I, I know this sounds weird for Capricorn, but some of you like felt like you shouldn't have to do the work that you're doing. Like it, it's almost beneath you in some way, or you feel like you should have been further along in the process than you actually were. And maybe that was part of this Mercury retrograde for you. And Mercury did go retrograde in your sixth house of routines and health and work, kind of the daily grind, so to speak. And it went retrograde from Gemini into Taurus, which is your fifth house, your house of pleasure, your house of fun and, and passion and romance. And maybe some of you are really trying to create something. You're trying to build something there. There's a lot happening in Taurus this month where you might actually be able to have this new creative idea or inspiration. But to be honest with you, it feels like there's a lot directed at you at once with the Seven of Wands. It feels like you have to defend yourself. And I really get the energy 
or message for you, Capricorn, this month is going to be about you picking and choosing your battles. And this is actually pretty pretty aligned, again, with the astrology. I have the full notes available on Patreon if you are interested and you aren't a member. Um, I have the astrology notes for all 12 signs. And I really felt like there was almost a reality check for you this month. And a lot of this could really be involving finances, actually, with the second house, uh, with Aquarius going, or Saturn going retrograde in Aquarius. There's a lot of lessons around money and resources and also values. It's not always material value when it comes to the second house. And so there's a lot here that's really asking you to focus on what matters and it might feel like there's all of these other distractions there's all of this conflict or something that's just kind of directed at you but it feels like you're fending them off you're keeping something at bay or at least you're trying to with the seven of cups as a challenge this is kind of what i was just talking about actually the Seven of Cups as a challenge to me is like, you need to limit some of your options here. You might be juggling too many things at once, there might be a lot of possibilities, there might be a lot of potentials or pathways that you're trying to walk down, but it's almost like you need to figure out what's worth fighting for. And I feel like maybe clarity hasn't been something that has come to you easily, either. Maybe you have lacked focus or direction, and that could be something that kind of continues throughout June, especially as we are in this post-shadow period that I was talking about. And we do have a full moon in Sagittarius towards the middle of this month on the 14th. And... There could be a lot that's being revealed from your subconscious, especially through your dreams. There could be a lot of fogginess that is coming into clearer vision or clearer perspective, and that's only going to increase towards the end of this month um, when we have Neptune going retrograde in the sign of Pisces. There is literally a veil that is being lifted. But until then, it, it does feel like there's a lot coming up here where it's like... Your sense of priorities may be a little off. Like, what actually needs your attention? What is demanding attention from you? And it, it might be hard to really figure that out because there's all these things that are around you or all these things that you need to do or there's, there's just so much here. I, I do feel like by the end of the month with the Two of Wands, you are finding a sense of direction and clarity. You are charting a course here. But it feels like there's just a lot happening this month where it's like... I don't want to say your priorities off, but it's like you need to be very mindful of where you're putting your energy this month. Five of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, and Page of Wands all showing up in reverse. Yeah, again, it's like what are you investing into? And what's giving back to you? There's a lot with finances here, especially with the five and six of pentacles in reverse. I feel like some of you are, are coming out of a period, maybe a financial hardship, or, or maybe there's... It's really just a shift in finances, honestly. Um... And it might feel like you have to choose between the things you love and the things you need. But then we have the Three of Pentacles, which is about working together. It 
and working on something, collaborating. It kind of feels like you're going for support or, or trying to work with people who aren't aligned. And it feels like this might be a pattern for you. And it's really important this month with the Three of Pentacles that you are finding people who are actually on the same page as you with whatever it is that you're trying to build or create, or even if this is talking about relationships. Make sure that you're working towards the same goals with people as well. We do have the Emperor, Aries energy, and we do actually have quite a bit happening in Aries with Jupiter in the sign of Aries, with Chiron and Mars actually coming together in the sign of Aries on the 15th. And this is about home and tradition and roots and family and your foundations and lineage. There's a lot about tradition here, actually, that I'm kind of seeing with the King of Pentacles in the past and the Emperor here. And again, like, who are you giving your allegiance to? There, there's kind of a question there as well. It does feel like you will be successful. You are going to build the thing. You are going to build the empire or the life that you want to have. But the people who are helping you or, or the people you are working with might not actually be able to help you. And so you need to be discerning. And maybe that's where the Seven of Cups is, is coming in. You need to be discerning with the people you are working with, with the offers you're receiving. Be selective. Be very, very selective this month because there's there's a lot of things that are kind of in your direction, being directed at you. And they're not all of the same quality or caliber. And you can, you can, it pays to be selective actually. There's a lot of like this kind of nobility or, or regality that is coming. Regality, regalness? Are those words? <laughs> um, there's just a very regal sense from the King of Pentacles and the Emperor here. And we do have the Hermit. God, this card has literally come out in all of these readings, I swear. Um, and this is about getting back in touch with this inner light or guiding light. Could be Virgo energy. Could be something happening in Virgo season. Um, we also do have Aries energy again. There's actually another Virgo card with the Knight of Pentacles, but there's just Earth sign energy in general here too. A um, lot of Pentacles on the table actually. Um, Some of you feel really lonely or, or burnt and like you need to defend yourself and you're fending for everything by yourself. But it's like you're looking for help in the wrong places. You're, you're even if the people around you are well intentioned, they just might not have the same goals as you. And you might have to find other people to work together on something or other relationships to build the life that you want to build. I do want to ask about this new moon for you. I don't feel like we've really gotten a whole lot of information about that because this is a new moon in Cancer. And there could be a new person coming in. And maybe that's what the Three of Pentacles is. And in this case, it could be a business partnership or working together with someone else making a commitment with someone else. Let's clarify the new moon in Cancer. Show me clearly. Judgment card, be discerning. 
Okay. Um, tell me more about this judgment card and the new moon and cancer. The chariot and five of wands. Again, okay. Wow. Pick and choose your battles. Who's going to fight for you? Who's going to go to battle for you or for the thing that you're trying to build? Because I kind of get the energy or sense you, you might be working on something or connecting with people on something, but when push comes to shove, that thing means a lot more to you than it does to them. And you might want to be careful about who you're involving in projects or in things here or in your plans. But I, I do feel like you are charting a course. You are figuring something out. Four of Pentacles being more guarded. This is actually really interesting. It's almost like the new moon for you, it's a cycle of being more selective with the people you work with. Or the people you give your energy to or give your time to. And there is a lot about your early childhood conditioning as well, because this new moon is squaring against Jupiter and Aries. I feel like a lot of you are trying to build a life, build a home. Where can I do that? How can I do that? Who can I do that with? Because home is not just a place, it's also the people you're, you live with. It's the people who are your family. Who's your family? But it feels like you're working together towards something. I want to pull an animal card actually for you. And we do have Neptune going retrograde the same day as this new moon on the 28th, and Neptune will be retrograde until the 3rd of December. And again, this is actually helping you get a lot of clarity because Pisces, this, the sign Neptune is in, is your third house. It's your conscious mind, it's communication. You might be having some very sobering conversations with people. There could be a lot of truth that comes out towards the end of this month that kind of shakes up some things because again, when these outer planets go direct or retrograde, it's around those periods of times, those stations is what they're called, is we, when we really can feel them in a very prominent way. So there may be some truth that comes out or you may just be seeing things more clearly. And it's interesting, as I was connecting to the energy at the very beginning here, I saw this kind of sunrise, except the sun wasn't the sun. It was almost like a cube or, or the, not even a cube. It was like... A, oh, what's that shape? Um, it had like different points and it was rounded. Um, like four points. Oh, I don't even remember. It's like a, a spade or something. I don't think that's what that is. It, it felt like an otherworldly sunrise. Um, and, and there was just something about a, a new day. Clarity. Um a new way of understanding something, a whole new world. Maybe that's what that was. Um, that is coming into focus. And your intuition is actually going to be very heightened. And you are actually a very intuitive sign for this reason, for, for the fact that you have Pisces as your third house placement or third house cusp, at least with whole sign astrology. You have a very intuitive mind. You're the mountain goat. You see things from a higher perspective. You see things in the long run. You see things for the long term. It feels like things are a little foggy or cloudy for you right before this retrograde. Or, or I'm sorry, yeah, right before this retrograde. And when it stations retrograde, that's when the clarity comes. That's when you're like, oh man, I was blind. How did I not see these things? Um, so just giving you the advance notice. I hope that's helpful and not ominous or anything. It's not bad. 
it, it's actually helping you figure out how you can build what it is that you want to build or create the life you want to create. Anyways, I was shuffling animal cards. We have, wow, we have the beaver. Something that requires a long-term commitment, building a home. There's a lot of connotations with family here. And you also have the mouse, which can be kind of this nitpicky energy, almost too detail-oriented. And sometimes with the beaver, a way I kind of can read this card, it's like you're trying too hard to direct a current. You're trying too hard to get everyone on the same page. And if you're trying to get people on the same page, or you're trying to get a partner on the same page, you really need to ask yourself, why am I trying to change this person? And is this something that's actually going to bode well in my interest in the long run? Like, even if I can change someone's mind or convince them or open them up to something different, maybe that's why it feels like you've, you've built commitments that haven't lasted. And if this isn't a home, then it's just a long-term project. And some of you need to figure out how to channel this very detail-oriented energy or, or how you can channel this need for control in a way that's productive with the mouse energy. And to be honest, Capricorn, th there was this energy of you kind of being this king, sending this knight off somewhere. It's like you're trying to lead the wrong people. And I feel like there's been a lesson of discernment, or there's a lesson of discernment there this month. Um, because you really need to focus on the long term, what's really going to work in the long term. It's not just, what's the next step that needs to be done? It's, okay, this is where I'm trying to go. How can I do this? How can I get there in a way that's going to be sustainable? And in a way that's going to actually work? And you're, you're Capricorn. You're good at that. You can do this. And we have the butterfly emerging from the chrysalis, a transformation, especially of the heart. There's this burgeoning energy that's very, very beautiful here. I feel like your heart is opening up towards something at the end of this month as well. And maybe there is a romantic component to this. Maybe there is a partner you are building something with. And it's like choosing the people who are excited about the future and excited about the same things you're excited about. And as you're going through a transformation process, it can be very helpful to have a routine to kind of help ground you through the process. That comes up with the butterfly energy as well. As you're going through, gen as you're going through a transformation, there's kind of this delicate energy. And with the Seven of Wands specifically, there's a lot happening, so you may need to take some time to recover. So give yourself some time to heal. Don't overdo it. Two of Wands. This is about the big picture. It's not all going to get done right now. And that's okay. And those are all the messages I have for you this month, Capricorn. I, I hope that this was helpful for you. Be sure to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. I do appreciate that. And again, all of my links are in the description box down below. You're welcome to check out some of the other readings if you want to look at your moon or especially rising sign. I highly recommend that. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care, Capricorn. Have a happy and blessed June.